Hello everyone, this video is on voice leading rules. Now, voice leading rules essentially dictate how chords can be connected in a harmonic progression. And there are way too many of them to cover them all here, so I suggest that you check the College Word website, it's very explicit about its expectations. But I will go over the main rules. So the first of those main rules is that there are no parallel fifths. Um, Parallelism is when between the same voices you have the same interval of the same quality consecutively. So parallel fifths in a four voice texture means between two of the voices you have a perfect fifth or diminished fifth consecutively that is moving. Um, so if you have an A and an E between the tenor and soprano and then you have a B and an F sharp between the tenor and soprano that's parallel fifths, because they're both perfect fifths, and they're consecutive. However, if you had an A and an E in the soprano, and then an A and an E in the soprano, it's not parallel fifths, because they're not moving. Um, other notes on fifths, on how they can be entered. In the outer voices, uh, it's most important how the fifth is entered into. If they're going in contrary motion, you're good. Um, as long as you're not going from a fifth to another fifth. Um, so you couldn't go from, say... Uh, a B and an F sharp to a F sharp and a C sharp, even if you move in um, contrary motion, because it's it's essentially parallel fifths, but not quite. Um, but anyway, that's something you can check out on the College Board website. But essentially, if they're moving in contrary motion, you're good. Um, otherwise, if they're moving in similar motion or the same direction, the soprano has to be going by step. Otherwise, you will commit something known as... Um, hidden octaves. Um, so keep that in mind. In the inner voices, it matters less if you have hidden octaves, um, but you know, if you want, you can try to keep it nice. Um, otherwise, th these same rules apply to octaves and unisons. So there are no parallel fifths, octaves, or unisons, and they all need to be entered in essentially the same way. Um, in general, contrary motion is always better. Uh, the next rule is that the seventh of a seventh chord must resolve down by step except for literally one progression, which we will talk about later. So this means in any kind of seven chord, whether it's a two seven or a, a five seven, the seventh has to go down. Um, this is, you know, it's just a rule of resolving tension. Um, it, so if you have a G dominant seven chord, that means that the F, which is the seventh, is going to go down by step. Now, whether that means it's going to be going to an E or an E flat, who knows? But it will be going down by step. Another rule is that the leading tone must go to the tonic in a dominant chord to tonic chord context. Now, what I mean by this is in like a five to one or a seven to one kind of progression, the leading tone has to go up. Now, if you're going from like five to six, well, I guess you have a little bit more leeway, but I would recommend just making that voice go to the tonic. Um, anyway, a little bit of a trickier rule is that of unequal fifths. Now, unequal fifths are called unequal fifths because they're like parallel fifths, except the quality of the fifth changes. So you can go from a perfect fifth to a diminished fifth if both voices are rising. So if you were to go from a C to G to a D and a flat, I don't know what key that would be in, but if you were to do that, you could. Um, you cannot, however, go from a diminished fifth to a perfect fifth rising, or in any direction, actually, except for a 1, 5, 4, 3, 1, 6 to 1, 6, and a 1, 7, dim, diminished 7, 6, 1, 6. For those, you can go from a diminished 5th to a perfect 5th, and you can break the 7th goes down rule. Um, that's the only time. Um, another tricky thing in the unequal 5ths rule is that either order is okay in the soprano and alto voices as long as they're going down. So this one takes a little bit more to remember, but it's still important because if you find yourself doing unequal fifths, you need to know if you're right or not. Um, a few reminders from the basics of part writing. Remember to write each chord with the correct doublings. So, like, don't double the third, the seventh, or 
and don't leave out the third root or seventh. Um, remember to put the correct note at the base based on the inversion symbols. And um, don't make it so that the voices are more than an octave apart or crossing. In general, though, um, when two adjacent chords in root position have roots that are a generic second apart, move the upper three voices in the opposite direction from the bass. So um, this will save you from doing a lot of parallel um, octaves and fifths, and in general giving you headaches. Um, so if you had a 4 to 5 in C major, you'd have an F major chord to a G major chord. That would mean your bass would be going up, and so your upper three voices should move down. That way you don't just move everything up a second and have all everything parallel. Um, another thing to keep in mind is that you should always make a pass checking that you treat the seventh of the seventh chord appropriately, treated the leading tone correctly, and avoided parallel fifths, octaves, and unisons. You just need to go through, find the fifths uh, in each voice, and then see if it how it was entered and whether or not it's in the same voices in the next chord. Same with octaves and unisons. With seventh and sevenths and leading tones, you just need to try and find those and see if you did them correctly. Um, but those are very important steps because it's really easy to make a mistake. Um, also, while you're doing those, any case of unequal fifths will become apparent. And in general, the rule of thumb is do not try to be fancy. Just move by step. Don't try to, you know, spice up each line. If your inner voices are looking, um, what's the word? Boring. That's a good thing because they shouldn't be moving around very much. Um, so just try to keep things moving by step. Don't be afraid to jump, because sometimes that will give you the best result, but don't be afraid to keep fairly stagnant. Um, also, read the College Board Documents, page 6 to 8. Uh, just click on the link in the video. All right, thanks, everyone. Good night.